I just want to appreciate our faithful volunteers. They've been doing this for 52 times. 52nd, 52 Sundays in the year, coming here at 8.30 in the morning. Sun is out or no sunshine. They're coming here, practicing, preparing songs, and leading us in the presence of God. Can we just appreciate them, Charisma? Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, I'd like to welcome you. My name is James. I'm one of the pastors here. Would you stand up on your feet today as we're going to, to study the Word of God? And the title of the message today is Finishing 2013 Strong or Finish 2013 Strong. Say this with me, Charisma. Finish 2013 Strong. Come on, say it with faith. Finish 2013 strong. Say it again. Finish 2013 strong. Listen up, lighten up, listen up, and look up. I want you to open your Bible, if you may, to Hebrews chapter 12. We could put it on the screen. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2. I want us to finish strong in 2013 so that we could start New Year stronger. And if there is one hero who finished strong, it's none other than our hero, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. This is his winning secrets. Let's all read this together. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Tell somebody you're going to finish strong. Amen. You cannot be seated. Yeah, strong. <laughs> Here's the big idea. The way I live something is the same way I enter the next thing. You read this with me, Charisma. Help me out. The way I live something is the same way I enter the next thing. Let's read it again. The way I live something is the same way I enter the next thing. This is my inspiration for the message for the last Sunday of 2013. What's the meaning of this, PJ? Has this ever happened to you? Any couples in the house, married folks? Sometimes you had a, a heated conversation with your spouse. You had that, a little bit of argument, and you end up upset, and you go to bed upset, and you wake up in the morning more upset. <laughs> the lovebirds became angry birds. <laughs> what happened? This principle works. The way I live something is the same way I enter the next thing. That's why I want us to finish 2013 strong because if we finish this last Sunday strong, we will be stronger and face New Year. Amen, somebody. If you have bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, anxiety, and worry in 2013, if you will end up 2013 like that, you will have bitterness, anxiety, worry, and fear in 2014. And that won't be a happy new year to all of us. Amen? Amen. Say this with me. The way I live something is the same way I enter the next thing. That's why I read it from you today. How to finish strong. Our greatest example is Jesus Christ. Did you know when Jesus starts something, he will finish it? That's why all of us are still road under construction. We are still on the process. 
So just tell the person next to you, be patient, be patient with me. God is not done with me. Amen. We're all a work in progress. Now we need to look to Jesus, and I see three important things today. Number one, everybody say with me, lighten up. Lighten up. Isn't this a good memory verse as we start the new year? Let's read this together. Let us draw off everything that hinders and the sin that easily entangles. Everybody say, throw off everything that hinders. By the way, how was your holidays? How was your Christmas? Awesome? Still digesting the food? <laughs> well, I don't know about you. Sometimes uh, you want to have a holiday, a perfect holiday season or a perfect Christmas gathering. But sometimes issues come up, right? The family or things like that. And I don't know about you. This is just me. So in my family, in order there will be no conflict, there will be no misunderstanding with my wife, we listed the events and holidays we're going to attend every year. And this is, of course, I'm a perfect gentleman. My wife comes first. From her family, I want you to see this. This is our, the events that are ready for Sharon's family. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve, Independence Day, Easter, Mother's Day. And for my family, this is the, uh, this is the event I'm going to attend. Halloween, April Fool's Day, Chinese New Year, Groundhog Day, Labor Day, and Ash Wednesday. <laughs> I just want you to lighten up charisma. But what I'm trying to say, sometimes even choosing where to go, who to host the party, where, where, where to celebrate, oh, sometimes it became an issue. And sometimes we just need to lighten up. Yeah. And especially this one. We need to lighten up with our past sorrows. We need to let go of past sorrows. Read this with me, Charisma. Let us strip up every weight that slow us down. That's a good verse to memorize as we enter the new year, physically speaking, but it's also a good thing to do spiritually speaking. Listen to me carefully. I'm your friend. I love you. The heaviest thing that you could carry is grudge. That's why I said the way I leave something is the same way I enter the next thing. If I leave 2013 with grudge, burden that I carry, it's bogging me down, and we're excited for a new year, but we cannot take off on a fresh start because we're carrying so much heavy load, semi baggage, and carry on. That's why Jesus said, let go of those past sorrows. Amen. Look at the verse that says here, let go of past sorrows. I just want you to, to share you a, a true story. This is a revelation. Did you know God did not call Abraham first to be the father of their faith? We all, Abraham always get the credit, Father Abraham and so many children, and, and then we jump up and down, and one of them, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But did you know, God did not call Abraham first. God called the father of Abraham first. Let's read this together, Charisma. One day, Terah took his son Abraham, his daughter-in-law Sarah, his grandson Lot, Move away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan. Everybody say, promised land. But they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years, died while still in Haran. For me, this is the saddest verse in the Old Testament. Terah, the father, took his son, the daughter-in-law, and the grandson Lot move away from Ur. You know where's Ur right now? That's Iraq. So God wanted to start a family not worshiping idols, worshiping the true God to start a new lineage. And God says, I will bring you to the promised land. What a journey. And on the way to the promised land, they stop at, everybody say Haran. Haran. But the problem is they settled there. It's like you're going to Las Vegas, and you stop at Barstow. You know where's Barstow? Because there's Outlet Mall. 
You want, you want to stop at Barstow to check out the outlet mall. But you don't stay there forever. I know some of the girls would like to live there. <laughs> you, you want to go to the, the place where you're headed. Listen to this. Settled there, and Tara lived 205 years. Back in the day, they lived longer. Died while still in her. Is that their destiny? Their destiny should be, Father Terra should be in promised land and died in Haran. You know why? Everybody say with me, past sorrows. Past sorrows. Everybody say, past sorrows. past sorrows. Why? What happened? Look at the next verse. <laughs> this is the reason why Terra got stuck. Let's read this together. This is the family history of Terra. Terah was the father of Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. I want to explain to you, in Jewish community, Jewish context, when a father is putting the names of the kids, the, the eldest always comes first, the, the elder blessing, the firstborn. So Abraham is the firstborn. Nahor is the middle children. Who is the youngest son? Haran. Let's continue. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans where he was born. Everybody say, Haran died. You know, I don't know about you. They said, usually the children will outlive the parents. Usually the children will put the parents to rest. Burial during when the parents died. But what is more sad is when parents will bury their kids. So maybe this devastating sorrow, pain in Abram's heart, he carried it. And he was going away to a promised land to start all over again. But he was carrying that wound, that pain in his past. Remembering the youngest son died. Now, on their way, let's continue. I don't want to miss this. is a revelation. Let's read this together, the next, the next slide. While headed for the land of Canaan, everybody say, promised land. They stopped at Haran, and what happened? They went to a place called Haran, and all of a sudden, memories like the corner of my mind. And Abraham's, oh my gosh, Haran. I remember my son who died, and this place is called Haran. Why don't, let's not go to the promised land. Let's just settle in Haran, and let's have our private self-pity party. And Terah lived 205 years, died while still in Haran. Sad story, right? He obeyed God first, trusting God. What a journey, adventure. Somewhere in the middle of the road, he got tripped. He got stuck. He got eventually disqualified because of the sorrows of the past. That's why charisma, listen to me carefully, friends. I'm not minimizing your pain. I know it hurts you. I'm not belittling that event, that issue in your life. But you need to let go of it. You need to leave it behind. Amen. Don't take it with you to 2014. Because grudge is a heavy burden to carry. Amen. Another verse, it says here in Luke, Jesus is saying, remember Lot's wife? What happened to Lot's wife? He cannot leave behind Sodom. He looked, she looked back, and he turned to a pillar of salt. This is another verse I don't want you to miss in Job. It says here, let's read this together. Another dies in bitterness, never having enjoyed anything good. Wow. New year, and you're grouchy. New opportunities, and you're mad. It's not about the new year. It's not about the new chapter. It's in you. And you carry it with you. You could leave Seattle. You could move somewhere else. You could move to another church. You could move somewhere else. But if you carry that bitterness in your heart, I'm telling you, I'm your friend, not your enemy. You carry that with you. Amen. You need to let it go. Amen. You need to leave it behind. Amen. You need to let go past sorrows. We celebrated the life and legacy of Nelson Mandela. One of my, the famous quote that I love is when he was about to leave the jail. This is what he said, as I walk out the door toward the gate that would lead me my freedom, I knew 
if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. Wow. What a powerful revelation. 20-something years, he was abused, mistreated, persecuted. As we all know, he, has a, he could carry a lot of grudge and hatred toward those people who persecuted him. But the moment he went to step out of the jail, he said, I need to leave all my bitterness and hatred behind or else I'd still be in prison. We need to lighten up. And the first thing we need to check in today to our baggage carrier, his name is Jesus, who could carry all our burdens, our load, our baggage, and our carry-ons. We need to let go of our past sorrows. Number two, we need to let go of our past sins. Let's read this together, Charisma. Let us throw off everything that hinders, that's baggage, sorrows, and the sin that so easily entangles. All of us have our favorite sin, although we would say, I don't want to do it again. But every now and then, you find yourself going back to that sin, going back to that bad habit or what, going back to that stuff. We need to let go of that because it entangles. It entangles. It's a bondage. It will hostage you. It will make you a prisoner. So that's why Jesus Christ is saying, hey, we're in a race. The first thing that we need to do, lighten up. And what do we need to let go? Let go of our past sorrows. We need to let go of, of people who hurt us, mistreated us, abused us, and all those things that happened to us in the past. Don't look back. Don't live your life in the rearview mirror. We need to run ahead with perseverance and let go of your sin. So today, I just want us like picture this in your mind. Like we're emptying our trunk, unloading my trunk of junk, and so we could... We could live fast and we could move forward and we could be lighter and we could reach the race, run the race because there's not too, have too many baggages and heavy loads that we're carrying. Number two, after you, listen, after you lighten up, everybody say with me, listen up. listen up. Let's read this together. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. Everybody say, let us. Let us. 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 For us. Have you noticed this? You are not running the race alone. We belong to the champion winning team. Everybody say, great cloud of witnesses. Do I have a witness in the house today? Yes. Chapter 11 of chapter 12 listed the heroes of faith. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, their story and their testimony. Why it was written in the heroes of faith, the hall of faith, so we could have a reference point. If you feel like you've been abused, mistreated, falsely accused, you know, check out the story of Joseph in chapter 11. Joseph will be saying to you, hey, bro, I feel you. Hey, sister, I know what you're going through. I was abandoned by my sibling. My brother sold me to slavery in Egypt. I ended up in a pit, and then I was sold to slavery, and then I became a slave, and then I was falsely accused of rape. I suffered 13 years in prison, in the prison. But you know what? God was with me, and he elevated me. I ended up in the palace. Listen up. Come on, somebody. Or probably this year you committed a sin that you are not uh, of course, you're not proud of. You're ashamed of that. It may be uh, sexual sin or immorality or adultery. You know what? Check out the story of David. Remember what happened to David one night while the troops are in battle? And he went to the rooftop. And nighttime, she, he saw a girl. Not sunbathing because it's nighttime, moonbathing. What's the name of the girl? Come on, talk back to me. What's the name of the girl? You know why she was called Bathsheba? She's taking a bath. If she was taking a shower, she will be called Shower Sheba. She was taking a bath, and Jones and David look eye 
lust, and committed adultery. But did God punish him for that? The Bible says he was forgiven and his heart belongs to God and he was called the man after the heart of God. What I'm trying to, you, to say to you, Charisma, listen up. No matter what you have done, no matter how shameful your past, listen up. God is for you. He's not against you. Come on, somebody. You have a new you in 2014. You need to have mentors. That's why I love our champion, Anthony Hamilton. He was strong. He could do it on his own. He never fights alone. He has a band of brothers. He has coach. He goes to every training possible. Why? And he listened up. And most importantly, he listened to his wife. <laughs> and the best advice. Why? Because you know what? Listen to me carefully. That's wisdom. Listen to me carefully. No matter how good driver you are, you still have a blind spot. I want you to know charisma. There might be a time in my life in 2014, I might slip, I might fall, I might do some crazy thing, and I need you to pick me up. I need you to lend your hand to me and cheer me on. Come on, somebody, because we're in this together. Amen. Amen? Look at this verse in Hebrews chapter 10. Not forsaking our assembling together, as in the habit of somebody, encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day. Some toys and gifts that you receive this Christmas, there is a sign on the, on the box. Some assembly required. Before you could enjoy the toy, you need to assemble the different parts. I know you're so gifted, but you cannot function alone. Some assembly required. And this is our assembly together. Amen, somebody. Why we come to church? Why people drive all over from uh, other places? Because it encourages one another. There's an atmosphere of hope in the house. Come on, somebody. There's an atmosphere of forgiveness, acceptance in the house because Jesus is here. And we listen up to him. Number three, look up. Everybody say, look up. look up. Let's read together. Now when the time was almost come for Jesus to be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. But the people who would not welcome or receive or accept him because his face set for the journey to Jerusalem. If there is a person who is most focused, he is Jesus Christ. You need to understand, he only served on earth three years. Three years. Imagine how busy his schedule was. Activities, traveling, and no tra airplane, no, uh, no, no uh, uh, helicopter, or no missile transportation by walk and donkey. But he was never entangled with, because he was so focused. He was only looking for one place. Steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Why? Remember, the goal of Jesus is not to be born in a major and remain a baby. He grew up because one day he will go to Jerusalem to die at the cross for the sins of the whole world. And he was so focused. You know, I learned this a little bit in science about the power of focus. I just want to read this to all of us. Sunlight versus laser. Take the sun for instance. The sun is a powerful source of energy. Every hour, the sun washes earth with billions of kilowatts of energy. The temperature of the outer visible part of the sun is nearly 5,500 degrees Celsius. But with some sunblock or lotion, you can easily sunbathe outside for one or two hours without any problem. On the other hand, laser is a relatively weaker source of energy. A laser takes a few watts of energy and focuses them into a coherent stream of light. Yet with laser energy, you can drill a hole into a diamond, cut through steel beams, wipe out cancer in human body, in fact, you can focus the little laser energy into temperature that exceeds 5,500 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of the sun. What's the point? Focus light has tremendous power. Our problem, we all easily get out of focus. 
And some of you are checking your Facebook status right now. Hopefully not. <laughs> or tweeting. We easily get out of focus. I want us to watch a short video clip. See the failure of this guy. He was about to win the race. His bicycle ride in, in Europe. He was about to win the race. He was hearing the crowd cheering him on. Then all of a sudden, pride kicks in, started to raise his hands too quickly. I just want us to watch this. See how he how he ended up the race. <laughs> he got too cocky and raising his hand and looking around, and then the bicycle trip over. So tell the person next to you, don't trip over. <laughs> don't get out of focus, amen. The focus is powerful. Another sad story I want you to I want you to see. We, I love to go cruising. No, we want to go cruise. A Mediterranean cruise. It happened this last year, January, in, in uh, Costa Concordia. That's the name of the ship. Can we show it on the screen? Look at that. 30 people died because the captain got out of focus. He finally admitted there is a computer that navigated and said, oh, I've been here so many times. I passed by this cliff and reef, and I'm just depending on his feelings. And she didn't know he hit a reef, and that big ship ended up in disaster, out of focus. And I challenge you, as you face this new year, 2014, you need to realign your priorities. You need to do some cuttings in your schedule. That there are three things that's most important. God family, and of course, your career. But not career before God and before family. Not career before family and God. If we put God last, the rest will be out of whack. If you put God first, the rest will be blessed. Why do we come to church on Sunday? It's the first day of the week. You want to give the best day of the week the rest of the week for God so that your Monday will not be manic, your Tuesday will not, not be traumatic, your Wednesday will not be wacky, and your Thursday will not be throwback, or your Friday will not be freaky, because Saturday will not be another sad day. We want Sunday to be the best day, the first day of the week. Give it to God. Amen. Focus. Listen to Jesus Christ. Let's read this together. Everybody read this with me. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 11 of Hebrews, Abraham was listed, David was listed, Moses was listed, all of the great heroes were listed. And then chapter 12, therefore, fix your eyes only on Jesus. Because all of those people are just human beings like us who have flaws and they have disabilities. What's the point? It's not the quality of the faith that counts. It's the object of your faith matters. It's not the quality of your faith counts. It's the object of your faith. Who is the object of your faith? Everybody say? Jesus. Everybody say? Jesus. That's what really matters. Not the quality of your faith. It's the object. Who do you trust? Who do you look up to? Who are you turning to when the chips are down in your life? When a crisis hits you, who do you go to? Fix your eyes on you. Why, he, why Jesus? He started this. He's the pioneer. There's no one before him. He's the original. There's no one before him. He's the perfecter. He will complete it. Who for the joy set before him? You know what was the joy set for Jesus Christ while he endured the cross? He was keeping his eye on the price. I hope maybe you'll be surprised. You know who's the price 
the eyes of Jesus fixed fix on the prize, it is everybody saying, look at the person next to you and said, you. You. You were the one who kept Jesus at the cross because he loved you so much that he'd rather die for you than you dying in your sin and go to hell. Amen. You were the one of the eyes on the mind of Jesus. He was thinking about you. That's why he could tell the angels, hey, I'm going to take this. Remember, come on, charisma. One snap of a finger of God, angels' armies will come down and obliterate all those people and save Jesus from dying at the cross. But Jesus held it, took it, all the pain at the Calvary. Satan was at his worst and Jesus was at his best. What kept him? You. The joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne. He finished it. He finished it strong. Amen, somebody. That's our hero, Jesus Christ. How did he do it? Lighten up. Listen up. Look up. I want you to read this with me from the message version. It's more simpler. I, want just, simpler. I just want you to read this with me. Stand up with me, Charisma. Let's read this together. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of when he was headed. That accelerating finish in with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline to your soul. Here's the big idea. The way I live something is the way same way I enter the next. Say this with me, charisma. The way I live something, same way. I said, if I live 2013 with bitterness in my heart, I will enter 2014 with bitterness in my heart. That will not be a happy new year. Today, I just challenge you to lighten up those load that you're carrying. Let go of those people. They have no power to harm you. You're the only one who's giving those people the power to harm you in your memory. You need to let go of those people that event that abuse. I want to read a, a poem. But I just want to end up with this. It's called Living the City of Regret. I had not really planned on taking a trip this time of the year. And yet I found myself packing rather hurriedly. This trip was going to be unpleasant. And I knew in advance, no real good thing will come out of it. I'm talking about my annual guilt trip. I got tickets to fly there on which I had airlines. It was an extremely short flight. I got my baggage which I could not check. I chose to carry it myself all the way. It was way down with thousand memories of what might have been, could have been, and should have been. No one greeted me as I entered the terminal to the Regret City International Airport. I say international because people from all over the world come to this depressing town. As I check into the last resort hotel, I noticed they had, they would be hosting the year's most important event, the annual PT party. I wasn't going to miss this great social occasion. Many of the town's leading citizens would be there. First, there would be the Don family. You know, you should have done, could have done, would have done. Then came the I had family. You probably knew of Wish and his clan, and of course, the opportunities would be present, missed, and lost. The biggest family would be the yesterdays. There are far many to count. 
but each one would have a real sad story to tell. Then shattered dreams would surely make an appearance, and it's their fault would come too. And they will be applauded by the don't blame me, I couldn't help it family. Well, to make the long story short, I went to this depressing party knowing that there would be no real benefit in doing so. And as usual, I became more depressed. But as I thought about all of the stories of failures brought back from the past, it occurred to me that all of this trip and annual PD party parties could be canceled by me. I started to tr truly realize that I did not have to be there. I didn't have to be depressed. One thing kept going through my mind. I can't change yesterday, but I do have the power to make today a wonderful day. I can be happy, joyous, fulfilled, encouraged, as well as encouraging, knowing this. I left the city of regret immediately and left no forwarding address. Am I sorry for my mistake I made this year? Yes, but there's no physical way to undo them. So if you're planning to, planning a trip back to the city of regret, please, family and friends, cancel all your reservations now. Instead, take a trip to a place called Starting Again. I like it so much that I have now taken my permanent residence there. My neighbors, the I forgive myself, the new starts are very helpful. By the way, you don't have to carry around heavy baggage here because the load is lifted the moment you arrive. There's the welcome and the host, Jesus. He will carry your load and baggage for you. God bless you in finding this great town where Jesus rules and reigns, and he alone can set us free. I just want to ask you something. Please just do this with me, act of faith. Would you please lift your hands up, palms up. The way I live something is the same way I enter the next thing. Palms up. You're expecting something big, something great, something favorable to happen in 2014. Can I hear an amen to that? Come on, somebody. Palms up. You're expecting mode. I'm going to receive it, Lord. I'm going to see it, Lord. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But you know what? Before God can put something in your hands, before God could put some of the favors and the blessings here, if there's so many, it's so thing loading you up, you need to unload this. The first thing I want you to do is palms down. Just do this with me, Charisma. Picture this in your heart, in your spirit. You are putting your baggage into the hands of Jesus. You are putting those heavy loads, the worries, the fear of the future, the struggles that you're going through, the pain, the loneliness, the suffering, the, the bitterness that you carry, the grudge, the unforgiveness. Come on, pour it out. Don't let it stay in you. Let it come out of your system. Let it come out of you. And let Jesus do the handling. Let Jesus do the fighting. Let Jesus do the carrying of you in 2014 and for the rest of your life. And I just want you to have a moment, just you and God. Remain palms down. You, you just talk to Him right now. Whatever is in your heart, whatever is in your mind, just, just talk to you and God. I want you to, to put that matter into God's hand. Let go and let God. Don't be in control. What is out of your control is not out of the control of God. He can handle it. Just pour it in. Pour it down. Bring it to Him. My heart will sing No other Worship name Worship Him right now Jesus You feel like raising your hands? Jesus. We 
we are free. Hallelujah. Sign up for surrender to Jesus.
with me, Charisma. Today, Jesus, I'm lightening up, unloading my heavy load of my fear, anxiety, worries, bitterness, unforgiveness, and my past sin. And I'm listening up to your word that I can do all Christ who gives you strength. I'm listening up that my God will supply all my needs not according to my income according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. I'm listening up that you have a plan for me and the plan is for my success to give me hope and a great future and I will call upon